Scarlet Speedsters, nerd tubers, and geek viewers of the world, how are we today? It's Flash Tuesday. Mr. Dark Phoenix, Spider Man, and Batman are here to bring you guys the latest episode of The Flash. But before we jump into the episode, I want to go through some stuff with you guys. If this is the first time you're catching my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I post Flash content every week, I post great geekly weekly content every week. And I'm just a great channel to be subscribed to. I would love to have you a part of the Geekiverse family that we have. And I just love to have you guys. I don't want you guys to lose out on the great content I have coming. Because I do have great content coming. And I just want you guys to know all about that. But, welcome to The Flash. This is also the first time you're catching my channel. This is going to be a spoiler review. So if you haven't seen the episode, come back when you have. But let's just jump right into the episode, The Flash. Power outage. Because I had to make sure a couple times it wasn't power outrage, but it's power outage. Let's just go with that. You know what? This dude, this Zoom bastard, he's talking to Zordon. That's who he's talking to. For all you guys asking, he's talking to Zordon. Before you smart mouth me, Zordon was a woman in the comic books. I mean, in the TV show. In the Power Rangers. So, ha! You lying, walking bastard. I knew we damn it, not wheels. Barry Allen is the only person excited to get mugged. Or any other hero, really, like Superman, Wonder Woman, anyone, really. They're just like, oh my god, you picked to mug me? I'm like, Barry, this isn't an award. <laughs> this isn't something to be excited about. Unless you're meta-human, then, I guess. Could have been worse, though. It could have been Killer Frost. She'd have probably, like, deep-froze him in, like, a, a statue and just pushed him over and walked away. Because Killer Frost is that cold-blooded. Yeah, I did it. I made the cold-blooded reference. Yeah, you still love me, though. Felicity upgrades the fat the flash cave right when I was thinking about that because he was like can you hack into it and I was like looks like y'all gonna need Felicity Felicity upgraded everything in our computers I was like oh snap you read my mind stop that but it's kind of good that she actually upgraded the flash cave because uh you can't have Felicity but you can't have smart people to know how to use her tech but now we have Felicity tech yeah hackers extraordinaire this is this is the spider-man episode I swear for God this is, it, it, it's your property, but it's your episode. I will explain. Electro is the villain, and we're going to go on further into that in a minute, but let's jump into, he had to tell the cab driver he was part of a cosplay party. Really? Don't get me wrong, it's a great excuse. I mean, I go to Comic-Con a lot, my friends do, I dressed up, you know. I mean, I had, a, like, I, I, I was Arsenal, so... I just had like a red leather jacket and a bow, but it's not like I was like Sephiroth or Ezio or like a outlandish costume where I can be like cosplay party. All right, get in. All right, even they know about cosplay. This is so bad. Shouldn't the, one thing I didn't understand though, and they kind of explained it in later on in the episode. But if the power went out, shouldn't the prisoners have been able to break out? Don't get me wrong, they only had like two. They had like Fart Mist and Colossus. So, but still, I mean, I was like, okay, you only have two. I kind of wish that th this would have happened. I hope, I hope this does happen in the future, but I was kind of hoping that this they would have tackled the prison break, pun intended, when they had captured more people. But they did it now, I guess, for the power outage. But I, w I, I really want them to capture Captain Cold and put him down there, and then he leads the prison break, and they call it that. Like, Captain Cold, it's like, time for me to lead a prison break. I'm like, oh, because he was on prison break with the Clock King, actually. But I don't think they're putting Clock King down there. But who else but me wants to hear Wentworth Miller make a freaking prison break reference? And it'd be amazing. It really would. I like it. I would think it was, it's one of those Easter eggs where they treat fans of both worlds. Like, time to start a prison break. Like, oh, shit. He said it. Zoom is now talking to Colossus. Actually, great to see that guy again. I like Colossus. I like him a lot. But he was like, I need you to kill him. And I was like, uh-oh. At least you have someone down there that's useful. The only other guy that's useful is the, is the smoke monster from Lost. And you can't really depend on him because he's evil mist. And he can't be hit. But he's also a fart monster, so you can't really do that. But call on Colossus, Dr. Zoom. You go get him. Electro killed Colossus. I don't understand science that well, so I want to know how he was able to do that. 
Because me and my grandmother were watching it, and we were both like, hmm, he's made of the metal. So you shouldn't be able to be able to do stuff like that. But somehow he was able to kill him. And it, it, was, it was awkward, because I was like, hmm, I really thought you were onto something there, Zoom. Like, I thought you had a little something there, but apparently he's dead. I, I, I really also like the fact that Barry saw him, and he was like, oh my god. And he was like, are you alright? He's like, run. I'm like, aw, it's your last tender moment before you die. Which is actually really sad, if you think about it, but... Zoom made the call, and you ha it had to be done. It's not like you gotta call Captain Cold, so... You gotta call somebody. Barry learns how to live without his powers, and he sucks at running. Which is which actually explains a lot, if you really do think about it. But, like I said, the Spider-Man episode. Electro, his villain doing some work. And of course, the, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah if, you, yeah, if you didn't catch those, just catch that reference, because you will. And the plot keeps getting thicker and thicker. Not zo technically Zoom, Eddie, th whatever his last name is, got shot, and he was all high on morphine when Barry did the speed thing, and I'm like, oh crap, tell me he didn't see that. I mean, they could chalk up to you being high, so. But it's like, both the Zooms are up to something. Or one of them. Zoom is not wheels. You mark my words, guys. I know he is. Because he has to be. But, one of the best things about this episode, and how I, how, how I review things, is the list of names that was mentioned. I have taken the liberty for you guys to go through the list, be a nerd, and tell you all who exactly they all are. So hold on to your butts, because we are going to name them all. Starting with Jake Davenport. Now, the only other link that I could have gotten from this is... J. Devlin Davenport, who is a wealthy, wealthy, wealthy man, who is like the Bruce Wayne, but the actual Bruce Wayne, the actual, like, Bruce Wayne's mask is the billionaire playboy, arrogant, whatever. He exudes that lifestyle, but he's also white, so, but it's like, that's reference number one. Name number two, Daria Kim, who is a, if you even isn't for Daria Hernandez. Daria Hernandez is a pastry chef who loves Renee Montoya, a.k.a. the female question. So, put that chick on Gotham, or put Renee Montoya on The Flash. Whichever one you want to do. It's all good. Ralph Dimney, or I couldn't hear it right, but anyway, it's Ralph Dibney, who is the none other than Elongated Man. Yay! Elongated Man reference! Power to stretch, all that good stuff, you already know what it is. Al Ronstein, who is a euphemism for Albert Rothstein, who is Adam Smasher. There it is. Oh, I'll cut that out. Adam Smasher, who, if you guys don't know, is the guy from the Justice League who could make himself bigger and stuff with the, uh, with the mask. Ah, oh, his picture will be right here. You'll know who he is, trust me. But, yeah, he can make himself tall, super strong, all that good stuff. Grant Emerson. Good old Grant Emerson. Yeah, these names just keep getting better and better. Grant Emerson is basically a living fusion reactor, and he can absorb and manipulate energy and he has super strength, all that good stuff. He could be a bomb if his powers aren't kept under wraps, which is not good. So we need to keep him calm and cool and collected. You don't want to see him when he's angry, literally. He'll literally blow up everything if he's not happy. So let's keep him happy, guys. Will Everett. Oh, yeah, Grant Emerson is damage. Yeah, explosions. Good, good. Click, click. Will Everett who is Amazing Man, a black superhero who has the power of magnetism. Fun, fun, fun! Also with the ability to duplicate anything he touches by matter. So I'm guessing if he touches diamonds, he's diamonds. I'm guessing he's like the other villain they introduced, but... Oh, no, wait, he's like the, he's like, he's the um, like absorbing man from Marvel. You touch something, you turn into it. Like, you touch diamonds, you're diamonds, you can punch people. So, yeah, that's fun. We can deal with that. Now, Bia de Costa. Bia de Costa is Beatrice de Costa, 
which, if you guys don't know, is the euphemism for fire. Justice League cartoon, the green chick, the green Brazilian chick Wally West tried to hit on, that's who that is. That is exactly who that is. Fire, manipulation, flight, green flames, all that good stuff. Good, good. Yeah. This is all fun. I like this a lot. And finally, we already knew Ronnie Raymond, her husband, who turns out to be... Ah, uh, he turned out to, who turns out to be Firestorm. Hope you guys loved that, because it was really fun to rewatch that scene over and over and over again, to get the names right, to research properly, and to get their names correctly, and to basically use my own knowledge to bring it to you guys. Give me a big thumbs up for, for getting you guys more information. One thing I love about The Flash is that because of the atom explosion or whatever they want to call it, the possibilities are endless. Literally. These eight names, well seven, these seven names could be people that can come back to Flash. They can come on the Flash and be part of the Arrow universe and vice versa. So let's just hope that we can see not half of these people on this show. I'd love to see Fire on this show. I'd love to see Elongated Man. I mentioned that in my Barry Allen Flash Show Theories video. Let's see Grant Emerson. Let's see somebody who can do magnetism. That sounds fun. All this stuff sounds fun and I cannot wait to see it. Thank you guys so much for tuning into The Flash. At the end of the video is going to be my social media links, and at the far end of the video will be annotations to playlists like future, I mean past reviews of The Flash, other great video playlists that you should be that you should be looking at, and that big old subscribe button in case you guys forgot. But next week is the big episode. The crossover Flash vs. Arrow two-part event. I will be covering both parts, obviously, but I will be so excited. Anyone that got to go to the fan premiere, I hate you. I'm kidding, I love you, but I sometimes I hate you. But it's okay. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this. Me, Batman, and Spider-Man are going to be signing out because we had to get our boomerangs ready for that review. Always remember that through good times and bad times, remember to geek out and enjoy your lives. I will not catch you tomorrow for Arrow because they had to sync up. So... Both, both shows are now on their 7th episode, so they can both be on their 8th for the crossover. But I will catch you guys on Friday for Constantine.